Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. We want to hear from you. Here at Faith on Friday today, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting for me. So you all, I'm, here's your disclaimer in advance. If this is something that may trigger you, you may want to be cautious. You have heard about it you've read about it, you may have known people who have struggled with this, or you yourself may have struggled with it. Due to our huge military presence all over the world, there are guys and gals who have suffered things and seen things that they bring back home with them. That is PTSD. And today we're going to talk about it with a military veteran, with a combat veteran, and with one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Y'all, please say hello to my friend, Doug Merritt. Hi, Doug. Hi, Ricky. Thank you so much, Doug, for being here with me. This topic is really important, and I'm a little nervous about this, but I'm excited to talk to you about it. Thank you for being an open book. No problem. All right, so let's jump in here. Oh, here we go. PTSD or PTS, depending on, you know, where you're at with this. Doug, tell me a little bit about what you're dealing with and how it all started for you. Okay, great question, Ricky. What I would tell you is uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or just post-traumatic stress is uh, something that's triggered by an event. It could be a, a horrific event, something you saw, something you lived through. But my story was a little different. It wasn't just one thing. It was over 30 years of service, I've seen a lot. I've, I've been around a lot, I've witnessed a lot. I've, I've seen dead people, I've seen friends of mine that have died. And what happened was when I got out, when it was near the end of my time after those 30 years was up, I was just reliving a lot of those things uh, that I think when I was in the military, I was too busy to notice those signs. And uh, as I had more time on my hands, it just got worse and to where I would get nightmares, uh, anxiety, uh, I consider myself a pretty upbeat guy, but I was depressed, uh, just a lot of things. And uh, it was really my wife that noticed it. And that was the first step I needed to seek some help. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we go on, like I told you before, uh, because I'm trying to uh, live a better life, even though I'm living with this, I don't mind answering the tough questions or if anybody has a, you know, a real question about it or what really happens and how it is with your family and kids. And I, I can answer all that because I, I'm just at that point now, maybe a year and a half ago, I probably wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, and that's so interesting because you hear so many people who say either I can't talk about it, you know, or, mm -hmm. or something happens right. and, and there are triggers because, yeah. uh, and, and like you said, you were in for 30 years. Thank you. Oh my gosh, for your service. Um, Thank you. And I know that you were a tanker for a, a bunch of them years right <laughs> yeah i did i did a lot i did tanks i did a uh, reconnaissance with the scouts and i also led a light infantry battalion okay so you was one busy one busy troop so out of the 30 years of the things that you've seen and done you said it was when you got out and i thought that was so interesting because a lot of times i mean i was in the military as well definitely not 30 <laughs> years but one of the things and it was a joke in the military I didn't give you permission to bleed. You ain't got time to this, mm -hmm. you know? So I like what you said is that you didn't really recognize a lot of this stuff until you got out and had more time on right. your hands. What's the first thing that you remember when you got out that you thought maybe something ain't quite right here? Well, I, I was having nightmares pretty bad. Uh, and my nightmares were of events that happened with soldiers, but they were replaced by my family members. So oh, wow. they were really intense nightmares where Every night I'm trying to save my family from drowning or some type of explosion or fire or they're trapped somewhere or we're in a shootout. And it, you know, it's, it's so vivid. It was just, it was, it was killing me. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I got to do something. So. Wow. That's insane. So, you know, and, and like you said, because my husband also deals with uh, PTSD at some point for yeah. us, our turning point was when he tried to break my arm in his sleep. He oh, was man. fighting in his sleep. Yeah. And I was, the, I was there. So I was in his dream. I was the enemy. He didn't see, it wasn't me, but right. he was fighting. Right. And so that was his 
thing. So now you're you're living with this. And that was another thing you said, you're living with this. Doug, is this going to ever go away for you? I, I don't think that it truly goes away. I think you just learn techniques to cope and uh, handle stuff better. Mine is talking about it mm. uh, because I, I went to a 12 week class for uh, to work on this, uh, you know, and it's all with brain processes and everything. And uh, that taught me how to talk about it and to not just relive the bad parts, but talk about it so that you know it's okay. Yeah. So that was actually called cognitive processing therapy. So I did 12 weeks of that. Oh, and uh, nice. that's what's made it easier for me to talk about. And I do have a lot of friends that are not in my situation where they can't talk about it or it brings up such terrible memories. I've got all those same memories. I can just talk about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and I, I still feel bad when I see my friends that, you know, something triggers a response and they can't express their self the way that they would want to. But I, I guess I'm just blessed in a way that I can talk about it and still move forward. Well, you've always been that kind of a man. I've, I've known you for a lot of years and you've mm -hmm. literally always been this guy. I, you know, it, it, it almost broke my heart when you said that you would be depressed because if anybody knows you, that yeah. word is nothing that would ever be associated with right. you. Right. When you were going through your depression, how did that manifest for you? Well, first, let me tell you this. Uh, that's the real on the inside. Uh, outwardly, I never project any type of, you know, pain or misfortune or I don't be I'm not down. I'm always upbeat. Yeah. Uh, you know, I call myself the lead motivator in the U.S. Army. But on the inside, that was what I was dealing with. And it was it was a. Uh, so depression for me was, it was like paralyzing where I didn't have the will to do anything. And it was like, I would sign up for things just because it would make me do things. I would sign up for classes because I knew I had to go to them. I would sign up for anything to make yeah. me do something because it, I was just paralyzed by this inaction. And it has never been me in the military. And towards the end, that might've been me, but I had to do things. And that was the only thing pushing me was necessity. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that was, it's, it's a hard way to live like that. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's another thing that I, I sought help for that, the, the depression aspect of it. And uh, one of the things that the, the VA likes to do, which I'm not a big fan of, is they just like to medicate you for every, every single thing. So it got to the point where Ricky, I was taking 15 pills a day. Wow. And I, I got to the point where I was like, you know, I gotta, I gotta make a change. You know, my wife's a nurse. Uh, she has all these great ideas about things I can do. And she points me in the right direction. And I don't get a lot of judgment from her. I just say, Hey, you know, why don't you look at this? And, and you know, that helped me out probably mm -hmm. more than anything is just having somebody on your side that understands that hey, your mind's not quite right, you know, but I'm still going to work. <laughs> with it. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's another great point because you have a lot of military members who have gotten out yeah. who are dealing with the same thing and their spouses yeah. are struggling. So when you're talking about this, you know, you said that your wife really is a help. You don't get a bunch of yeah. uh, judgment from her. What can you say to somebody who's watching this, who is a spouse of someone dealing with PTSD? How can they help their member? Well, I think patience is probably the best thing. And that's the thing I'm, I'm trying to get patience now at 52 mm -hmm. uh, with this puppy I have. But, uh, Patience is one of the things I would say you have to, you know, it's a hard thing to talk about because, you know, you figuring if it's your husband, you know, this big, strong, gung-ho guy that did all this time in the military, he's not afraid of nothing, been to war multiple times, and now you can't even deal with your own emotions. It's it's a tough, it's a, it's a tough thing to think about. And you always feel like, uh, I don't want to seem like the weak guy, but I got to the point where I, I was tired. I didn't care what people thought anymore. I just had to, had to get back some semblance of normalcy so mm -hmm. i think communication uh the patients and then do some research talk to some some people that know don't don't talk to your friends necessarily because you might get different information but you know the va has a lot of services and i've, I've looked for a lot of them and there's a lot of nonprofits out there that can help uh and there's a lot of no cost things you can do to help mm -hmm. people with PTSD. and I've, I've i've immersed myself in just about anything possible because i don't want to live like this Mm hmm. And, and it's not only, you know, you said earlier, it's not only that you don't want to live like this. You don't want yeah. other people to have to go exactly. through this either. Exactly. exactly. I don't know if you if you can imagine uh, anxiety is another thing that I inherited through this, which I would have never said that I was an anxious person. But now to this day, my family has to knock on the wall before they come around the corner or else I just like jump out of my skin. So, I mean, and, and I I hate that they have to do that. But the, the consequences of them scaring me 
yeah. you know, yeah. I don't know how I initially would react. So, you know, I've, I've learned to control that a little better, but it's just something they do to keep me from being startled because your startle response is, I'm like always on edge. I'm always ready for mm -hmm. something to happen. And that's yeah. that's a byproduct of the military. You know, it's a by, byproduct <laughs> of combat. And, you know, you're always ready. And that, that was our motto in one of the units I was in, Simple Paratus, we're always ready. So yeah. that, you know, and, and you think about that, you know, hearing about it, maybe knowing somebody or living with someone has it is completely different than dealing with it on your own and yes. then dealing with what used to be a stigma about it, which isn't right. anymore. And I'm so grateful for that. But right. let me ask you, Doug, how many folks have you run into who don't understand PTSD and will actually question you about your disability for the lack of a better term? Uh, well, you know, there's ignorance everywhere. Um, I, I was gifted a service dog through an organi organization called Operation Battle Buddy. Mm. And the dog is a PTSD dog. And what a lot of people don't understand about disabilities and the American Disability Act is it's really not a thing that you would normally ask somebody unless you can feel like you're open. They're open to talk about it. You don't ask them, hey, right. what, what disability is that dog for? You mm -hmm. know, it's for me. But anyway, because I'm, I'm OK with that, I can talk to people about it. But a lot of people, they don't really understand. They don't understand uh, how PTSD manifests within your body and what it does to your mind. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the physical things that you go through also. So a lot of times it's just ignorance. They don't know. So I usually give people a pass if they, you know, they label you, oh, he's crazy. Well, you know, he's got guns and he's got PTSD. <laughs> well, I do, but I, I, <laughs> it's nothing to worry about. If I ever get to the point where I figure I'm not safe with those guns, then we'll, yeah. we'll make another plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is just so interesting, you know, and we're not even going to talk about the gun thing because that is so huge right now everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. keep them <laughs> locked up. <laughs> the end Let, let's just start there because you know i'm a mother of a son who's retired yeah. military and who has yeah. a mild form of ptsd as well mm -hmm. and some of the things you know looking back at my family members that did you know some of the triggers that they have loud noises dark yeah. excessive bright rooms crowded right. rooms people running at them and being right. surprised are there right. some the same things that will mess with you as well Yes. And now, one of the most interesting ones is loud noises don't bother me because I was on tanks for 30 years. I'm used so you can't to hear noises. anything. I, I won't jump if I'm next to the tank that shoots. But if my yeah. son comes around the corner in the kitchen, I jump out of my skin. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues that I have, and people always look at me funny because they look at me and figure, oh, he's not disabled. I get on the plane first with people that have disabilities. Reason yeah. being is when all those people are bumping into me and pushing and shoving, it brings out another part of me that is not going to be conducive to safe flying. So when <laughs> they them. say when they say elderly and people with disabilities can get on the plane first, I'm that guy. Yeah. So, wow. but you know, I always get that. I always get that at the front. You don't look disabled. Well, that, that's a that's a terrible thing to say to somebody yeah. because I, I don't know how people with disabilities just look. Mm. But I, yeah. I experience that a lot. But that is a problem that I have, uh, crowds. I don't do crowds very well, uh, but the loud noises doesn't bother me. Uh, just usually the crowds and the people all around me uh, mm -hmm. where I can't, I can't just get away. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's definitely a trigger. That, that, you know, and it's just so interesting that you're willing to talk about it because like you said earlier, a lot of people are not. And yeah. I am so grateful for you right. wanting to talk about it and being so open yeah. about it because there's so many of us who don't have answers. We don't know what to ask or who to ask. So Doug, right. if somebody wanted to continue this conversation with you, are, would you be open to, re to them reaching out to you? Yeah, without a doubt. I have a lot of people that reach out to me. Sometimes all you need to hear is just a word from somebody that you know has been through something that helps you out. So uh, anybody that would it had a problem, uh, I wouldn't mind talking to you anytime. I, I'd wake up in the middle of the night, talk to you, whatever it takes, because uh, people actually die from things like this and because they don't know how to cope. So anything I could do, I'm willing to do. So if somebody wanted to talk to you, Doug, where could they reach you? Well, the best place to reach me is at my email, which is danger71ad, and, uh, and that's a Gmail. Uh, and I also have the same email at Yahoo, but that's the best way to connect with me. And then if there was an emergency, uh, I wouldn't mind somebody picking up the phone to call me either. Wow, that's, that is that is incredibly gracious. And don't worry, y'all. If y'all didn't get his cool email or his phone number, 
it is going to be in the description below. You know, we don't usually post phone numbers, but this is a special topic. And this special man has said, please call him even in the middle of the night. And I appreciate yep. that for you all. If you know someone or that really would needs to be on this show to get their subject, their topic out, we want to hear from you. So go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us a message. Doug, my friend, before I let you go, we got to play a game. Win. <laughs> so this game is called This or That. It's really simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things or three, depending on the question. And you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Okay. Are you ready to play? I'm always ready. Let's do this. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> I forgot 30 years in the military. Never mind. <laughs> Michael Jackson or Prince? I'm a Michael Jackson fan. Okay. Work from home or go into the office? Uh, I've evolved on this one. I'm work from home. Uh, no, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Romantic comedy or action adventure? Action adventure. All day. Fight, flight, or freeze? Probably fight. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Do it yourself or hire a professional? Well, <laughs> I have no skills. I am all about the American Express card. I hire a professional. I know that's right. You and me both. You answered this earlier, but it's on the card. Large crowds or small groups? Definitely a small group. Slow dance or shake that thing? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> I can cut a rug, but I, I do the uh, shake that thing. Yeah, you do. But I've seen you shake that thing, Doug. I was going to mm -hmm. say that's the slow dance. That's just me. And you know I care for you. <laughs> so in peanut butter, is it crunchy or smooth for you? Well, not a big peanut butter fan, but I'm going to say if I do, I'm going to have to go smooth. Okay. And finally, what would you tell your 13-year-old self right now? Uh, I would tell my 13-year-old self to... Don't limit yourself and do all the things that you ever thought you wanted to do. At least strive to do those things. I like it. That's really good. Doug, thanks so much for joining me on this important topic. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me, Rick. My joy. If you or someone you know is struggling with the effects of PTSD, you're not alone and help is available. The VA has a hotline that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Make the call. Speak with someone who understands what you're going through and who is qualified to help. You still have a lot to offer, and there are a lot of people still counting on you, your family, your community, and your country. And from all of us at Faith on Friday, thank you for your service.